Did you know that Nintendo did a massive update in regards to the Nintendo Switch Online? Not only did they update it, they gave us a look into the future of Nintendo Switch Online. Thanks to Shintura Furukawa. So thank you, buddy old pal, Mr. Ugh, President of Nintendo. That's right, we get to talk about that. We also get to dive into some stuff regarding, I don't know, a controller company who decided to trap a Pikmin inside. Yeah, don't worry, Pikmin. I might have to get one just to let you loose. And beyond all of that, we have some new potential rumor information. I mean, look, it's a rumor. It is what it is. On the new Mario game coming to Nintendo Switch 2. It's not coming from the place you think you it would be coming from. No worry. I took Zippo out back and... Uh Moving on, it turns out that Nintendo might be one of the most trusted, if not the most trusted, company in the entire world of entertainment, at least according to a certain outlet. That's right, folks. We're going to dive deep into this stuff, and we're going to begin right now. <laughs> So controller and third-party accessory maker PDP Realms has announced a brand new controller that you can pre-order right now. Now, in the past, PD Realms has released other controllers like this in their Realm series where they dealt with Sonic the Hedgehog for Nintendo Switch and they would trap Sonic, Tails, and Knuckle inside a controller and it's kind of cool and they've been on sale for quite a while here in the United States and in the UK. Well, now they've announced a Pikmin version, which yes, has a really cute looking motherboard, you know, main board in it with some art, but also in the left handle of the controller is a trapped red Pikmin. That's right, they want it to contain the heat. Now, it's interesting looking at this because it's got a interesting price point. Now, if you look at these Sonic ones, they released at $39.99 USD. This one's, however, releasing at $59.99 USD. And you might go, man, maybe that's the Nintendo tax, right? They had to get licensing for the Sonic IP. Well, licensing for Pikmin must have been more. Well, maybe that could be part of the story. Also, the Sonic controllers are wired. Well, this one is wireless. It is the only of the PDP Realm series controller to be wireless for Nintendo Switch. So I find this to be quite interesting. Look, I don't talk about accessories and controllers that often unless it's something cool, unique, and fascinating. And this happens to be one of those cases. Don't know if the controller is any good. Look, I've used several PDP controllers over the year and they tend to be not the greatest quality from my experience, but maybe these ones are different. Or maybe you just wanna get it because it's transparent and there's Pikmin trapped in it and it would look super good on a shelf. I mean, look, if I put some shelves back here, I, I could put it there and you guys might be like, Nate, why are you trapping Pikmin? I don't know. I mean, it feels like that's what I'm doing every time I turn on Pikmin Bloom anyways. Now, before we dive into this NSO update, I just want to say, hey guys, you know what? I would love if you would go ahead and smash that subscribe button. And you know what? Maybe go ahead and tap, tap away on the like button as well. We're on a road to 150,000 subscribers. And look, I don't know if we're ever going to get there. Let's just be honest. I'm the king of losing subscribers. But if we want to get to that next level, we want to continue to climb that ladder, I'll just drop some cookies down on you. Look at this. Rain them in, boys. <laughs> That's right, we dropped some Oreos today. We'll think about dropping something else later. Maybe maybe we have the Oreos drop right now and uh, burn them with that hot fire. Next up, we need to talk about Nintendo and the Nintendo Switch Online service. Because, look, if there's one thing we know that's heading forward to Nintendo Switch 2, we know it's Nintendo accounts and likely this subscription service. But what about the future of it right here on Nintendo Switch? We know that they've announced games and all of this stuff, but what are we talking about after the currently announced games? Well, we have some news to share with you on that, so let's just dive in. First up, Furukawa announced during the investors meeting Q&A that there are now 38 million active subscribers for Nintendo Switch Online, which is pretty good, and that they're going to continue to support Nintendo Switch Online in the future by adding more games to the service. Now, this is good news, and Nintendo Switch Online will continue to get games added for years to come. Presently, only two games announced have yet to get release dates here in the United States, and that's 1080 Snowboarding for the Nintendo 64 and Golden Sun for the Game Boy Advance. They did announce Jet Force Gemini recently for December. Now, one thing we're gonna do here quick is to bring up a fellow YouTuber. I don't do this very often, and much respect to you, Zach, but we're gonna bring up something that Switch Force brought up, and I want to just add a small correction to it because 
as a parent who uses the parental app and have it directly affect Nintendo Switch Online. There seems to be confusion around this 18 plus app that they did launch in Japan. Now, Switch Force mentioned that Nintendo launched an 18 plus app in Japan, something we covered previously on the channel. And he's super thrilled that this doesn't exist in the United States and that the Switch has great parental controls. Now, I don't blame Zach for not being aware of this, but in actuality, I would like a separate NSO app for M-rated games. Why? Well, at present, as a parent who has three children with their own Switch, I naturally don't want them to play M-rated games in general. So when you use the Switch parental app, I can make it so they can't play M-rated games. Not that I have an issue with games like GoldenEye in particular, but there are M-rated games on Switch I am not comfortable with my eight-year-old child playing. Some we do have physically, like the Grand Theft Auto Trilogy Collection. So I blocked M-rated games through the parental app on my children's accounts. Do you know what my children can't do anymore? Play games on the Nintendo 64 app. Unfortunately, the parental controls do not differentiate game ratings within the Nintendo Switch Online apps, so they can't just block the M-rated N64 games. It has to block the entire application. Compared to that situation, I would prefer an M-rated NSO app so my kids can continue to play all of their games without the entire application being blocked. This is possible now, technically, in Japan. And yes, I could have my kids download the Japanese N64 app, but then it's all in Japanese, and that's not going to fly with my kiddos that are still trying learning to perfect English. Now that just seems like an interesting and crazy situation, and again, as someone with a lot of experience using the parental app, it has a lot of unique and special functionality, but I can't just block individual games or individual applications, and I also can't just like okay the rest of the N64 app. It, it's unfortunate, and this technically overly complicated solution from Nintendo in Japan would help out parents here in the United States. But let's move on to the next thing here, because Japan wasn't done announcing games. They're doing some weird stuff with Nintendo Switch Online. We gotta talk about this. So oddly enough, Japan did add two more games as coming before the end of 2023, officially on their schedule. One of those being the aforementioned 1080 snowboarding, and the other being Harvest Moon 2. So these games must be coming before the end of December, right? Maybe, or maybe not. They do not have a current release date and could be delayed to 2024 because of that. It's just weird to see them pop up and now listed as before the end of 2023 games. Maybe we're about to get them as shadow drops here in the United States next month. I don't know. Time will tell. It's sort of a crazy situation, but you know what? There's other unique situations going on out there, including the fact that Nintendo is the number one entertainment company in the world. No, seriously, this isn't like my biased opinion coming out. This is according to Newsweek. Now, the interesting part here is that Nintendo beat out Bandai Namco for the number one rating in the Newsweek publication for Entertainment Company. Kind of interesting. We're not seeing Disney or, I don't know, any of the major entertainment companies out there. Where the heck are Sony and Microsoft? Well, they're not really on the entertainment list. Sony did make number seven on the technology list, which is quite fascinating, but oh, the list seems a little biased. Look, this is a worldwide listing and it's not just targeted to specific countries. We don't really know how the lists were made, how they determine what companies qualify for each list or not, and then obviously how they determine the order. None of this is really known or explained by Newsweek, so it's a little frustrating, but look, you know what? I am only bringing this up because Nintendo's number one at something again, and that something is a positive, it's just a weird positive. I do think Nintendo is one of the top entertainment companies in the world. Are they number one though? I mean, think about all the movie makers and TV show makers and I, I just toy makers, you know, that's a form of entertainment. How are we basing this? Is it just digital media entertainment? Well then where's Disney? How is Disney not even in the top five, let alone, you know, in the top three? Look, there's just a lot of really, really weird things going on with this listing, but hey, Nintendo's number one. So I guess, uh, we should celebrate. <laughs> now we get to end our video today talking about a brand new rumor. Now remember, rumors are not facts. They're meant to be 
Very, very skeptical. They're not necessarily based in truth. I can't verify any of this. And no, again, it's not coming from the guy you think it's coming from. It's actually about the Mario game, the upcoming 3D Mario game potentially, or a future Mario game. It'll make sense in a moment because this rumor is coming from Nash Weedle. Now, Nash Weedle gained his popularity by being one of the only people that we can link directly to leaking Metroid Dread back in the day. And while he's had a couple of rumors over the years, a lot of them were pretty small. Some of them came true, others were still waiting on. And so we don't really know what to think about him. And there's been other people rumoring on some of the stuff he's talked about. But this is now one rumor that we can link directly to him because nobody else is talking about it, at least when it comes to being a thing Nintendo's gonna actually do. And that is this concept for a new Mario game. Here's what he put out on a post on X. Leak Express. Would you like the next 3D Mario, our mustachioed hero, to visit worlds from other Nintendo sagas? Well, it seems that Nintendo is already experimented with this and could become a reality at some point. Can you imagine Mario traveling through Hyrule or piloting an R-Wing? Now, he does note in a response to someone that he also doesn't think 3D Mario is going to be a launch game and will instead arrive a few months after launch. But he doesn't really confirm any of this, so it could just be a prediction. Notably, Andy Robinson has previously stated he heard a 3D Mario would be a launch game, but not from enough sources to do like a full report on such a thing. Most of us just assume it would be a launch game, but can a world exist where it isn't? And if so, what would those launch games be? And then on top of that, what are we doing with this damn rumor? A Mario game that visits other Zelda, Star Fox, Kirby, Monolith, you know, get, we get, get into Xenoblade. Like, I could, would, man, it's basically the ultimate crossover game. Like, we think about this in Mario Kart because we've seen some of these worlds come into Mario Kart, but imagining a 3D Mario visiting other lands in the Nintendo universe could be quite an original concept and something I would definitely be cautiously optimistic for. Uh, I don't really know what would happen. I don't know how the gameplay would vary. Obviously, it's like, oh, you're flying an R-Wing for Star Fox. So I don't really know how this would all work, but that's not for me to figure out. That's for the game creators to figure out. And again, if this does happen with the next 3D Mario or a future one, we can go back and point to this as being like the first time we've heard about it. Now, in terms of whether or not 3D Mario is going to be a launch game for the next system, that is something that's obviously been debated. I know a lot of us just sort of accept that it's going to be because it makes a lot of sense. We haven't had a new 3D Mario since 2017. Why the hell at this point would they just make the 3D Mario a launch game? But if we explore a world where a 3D Mario is actually a launch window game rather than a launch game, what's going to be that killer app for Nintendo at launch? And I know some people will just scream Metroid Prime 4, but it's not a system seller, especially for a new system. And it might be cross-gen. There, there has to be something else. Is it a new game for something else? Maybe it's Monolith Sauce, brand new IP. I don't know. I'm just throwing, you know, farts in the wind at this point. It's not like I have any idea what Nintendo's doing. It's not as if I can just call Doug... <laughs> Excuse me, I gotta take this. Hey, Bowser, my man! Oh. Oh, uh, the ninja, uh, uh, oh, oh, yes, sir. I, I deeply apologize. I'll, I'll let the editor know. Um, cut. Well, everyone, we got, uh, Grandpa Prime here, and I'm just here to let you guys know that we will not be getting a Mario game for launch of the news. I've heard Mario is being retired, just like, uh, just like my back. Uh, sorry, guys. Uh, I'm getting a little tired of having to carry my, 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 my grandson uh, uh, to his success on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for being here. Like, subscribe. Uh, I'll catch you, catch you in the next video.